everyone, welcome back. So last time we were talking about exergy, which is simply what portion of the energy in my system can actually do work. And how do we know that not all of our work, um, not all of our energy can go to work? Let's finally define this magical term irreversibility. Now we've mentioned this for quite a while. Like in chapter six, we started talking about efficiencies. And I said, hey, the more irreversibilities you had, the less efficient the system is. Then finally in chapter seven, we said, well, there's this thing called entropy. And entropy is how we are losing energy. Entropy is how we can, one way we can, we can measure these irreversibilities because the more entropy we have, the more you know energy we're losing, the more energy that could have been work that isn't work. So finally, we come to chapter nine where we have exergy and we can really quantify our irreversibilities which make it much easier for us in the future we're trying to figure out where in our system do we want to improve things. Now before we can do that, we gotta get a few definitions. So first off, reversible work. Remember when you say reversible, you're always thinking about the absolute best case scenario. So for a particular process, that'd be either the maximum amount of work that can be produced, or if it's you know, a process that requires work input, That'd be the minimum amount of work it takes to do that. Now, this is all well and good, but remember, in real life, we have things we're having to deal with. There's also something called surroundings work. Now, you see this for piston cylinder devices a lot. There's also other systems which would see this as well. But if I'm expanding something and there is air outside of my system, well, then my system has to push against that air. And since it has to push against that air, it's actually doing some work to push the air out of the way. And so even if I was a perfect system, even if it was perfectly reversible, some of my energy is still lost, just moving air out of the way. And then finally, I have what's called useful work. Useful work is simply saying, okay, how much did I actually produce? How much work was I actually doing? And um, how much of that was then lost by the surroundings, pushing the surroundings out of the way? And then that's just the useful, that's the work I actually get because some of it got lost in the atmosphere. There's an easy way to calculate this. First off, my surroundings work, it's just a constant pressure process. So what's the change in volume of your system times the outside pressure? And finally, useful work is simply my work, whatever it is, minus my surroundings work. So even in the best case scenario, if I have a perfectly reversible system, I'm still gonna lose this surroundings work. Okay, so with this in mind, are there any systems that don't have surroundings work? The answer is yes. First off, cyclic devices. Your car is a cyclic device. You're like, wait a second, so there's no surroundings work? Depends on how you define it, but kind of. For one, your car takes in air at one point and it expels air at another. Because it takes in the air at one pressure and expels at another pressure, those two kind of cancel out. Places where it's really clear that there's no um, surroundings work are steady flow devices because it's not having any exterior, it's not expanding, there's no change in volume of this system. It's always the same. So it's not pushing against my environment. And the last place where it should be really obvious is rigid tanks, because we have no change in volume whatsoever. It's not touching the environment at all. And so obviously in that case, my work output would just be equal to my useful work. Okay, but I said irreversibilities, we're gonna to get to irreversibilities finally and finally define those. So let's do that. So. We've mentioned this in the past. I gave it lots of different definitions, but this is the best one. Um, irreversibility is simply the difference between the reversible work and the useful work. Remember, reversible is perfect. Useful is what I actually get, even taking into account that I'm pushing my surroundings out of the way. And so if there's a difference there, that means I have some sort of irreversibility. There is something that is keeping me from being in that perfect system, whether it be air outside my system, friction or something else. So since we're in chapter nine talking about exergy, well, irreversibilities are a measure of the lost work potential. So I had more exergy. I used quite a bit of it, but not all of it turned into work. Some of it got wasted. And so energy that could have gone to work did not. And so the smaller my irreversibility, the better my system. The smaller my irreversibility for a process, the more efficient that process is. And so if I'm trying to find a place to improve my system, 
I want to focus on the places with the greatest irreversibility. If I can minimize that, I can improve my system. And so here's a nice way to look at how you calculate irreversibilities. As a note, we're always looking for a positive number. So in the out case, remember you're going to have more reversible work output. So that's why that one's first. And on the input case, well, I want I have less reversible work input due to a particular process. So that's why they would switch places. If you get a negative sign, just switch it. It's not a huge deal there. Just know irreversibility is always a positive number. Okay, with that, we're going to stop here. And next time, we'll actually do a problem, a simple problem, going through how irreversibilities work. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all then. Bye-bye.